Thank you, Sarah. Thanks to the organizers as well. Am I turned on here? Thank you. So Maxite is a Maryland-based company uh, with a platform technology to specifically engineer cells for a variety of different applications. Essentially, we can take any cell, autologous, allogeneic, or cell line, load it up with any kind of molecule, small molecules, large molecules, nucleotides, using the Maxite system, which is a regulatory and a GMP-compliant platform. It's a scalable platform, effectively to control molecular flux inside the cells so that we can control the biological activity of the cells to come up with an enhanced potency cell therapy product. So our goal in utilizing this platform is essentially twofold. We want to be able to enhance and customize the biology of a cell for a given therapeutic indication, and we want to take away the scale-up risk with translational, clinical, and commercial development of cell and gene-based therapies. We use this technology platform other than in cell therapy, in also areas of drug discovery research, as well as protein and vaccine production as well. Specifically, uh, in the interest of uh, the audience at this meeting, I'm going to only focus on the aspects relevant to cell therapy development and commercialization. Uh, we have an ever-growing list of partners in all the markets that we serve. I think we have over 50 partners worldwide today that utilize this particular technology in various aspects. Some of them are going to be in the cell and gene therapy space as well. Essentially, the key attributes and the takeaway message is we can effectively load molecules into cells with high efficiency and high viability without damaging basic physiology or function of the cell. So the first tenet of making any changes do no harm. And the second tenet is we can get essentially 90% or 95% plus modulation of the desired biological activity. Okay? It's a scalable platform in that, in that it utilizes the same device but scales up the size of the single-use disposables to allow us to go from basic research scale, running a few hundred thousand cells, to clinical or commercial scale, where you can run about 200 billion cells, which is roughly equivalent of a 200-liter bioreactor. It takes us about 20 minutes in a fully automated manner to process 200 billion cells through the system. So it's a very rapid unit operation. We have an ISO-compliant quality system. We have a CE mark and a master file that's been accepted by the FDA in the U.S. and in Canada. This master file has been cross-referenced in 10-plus applications to initiate human clinical trials in North America. The technology and the platform has also been reviewed from a regulatory perspective in human trials that have happened in Asia, Singapore, and Japan. And we have one commercially marketed therapeutic that is marketed by our partner, who's uh, uh, a representative, Suzuki-san, uh, is sitting in the audience here in Japan, where uh, they're utilizing this platform to manufacture uh, autologous cellular immunotherapy services and provide it to partners. So essentially, given that this is a partnering forum, there's really two components to the partnering forum I want to talk to you about. One is our experiences in engineering stem cell therapies to make them more effective. The second aspect is we as a company have also utilized this platform to develop unique cellular therapy products which have advanced into human clinical trials where we are looking for partnering relationships and opportunities as well. So I'm going to start off by talking about the first one and take a couple of selected examples to illustrate the power of the technology. The first example is using stem cells in pulmonary arterial hypertension. This is a disease of vascular insufficiency in the lungs. Your lungs are the most heavily vascularized organ in your body because they have to handle the entire cardiac output. What happens in disease is there's loss of vasculature. And as the vasculature collapses, it builds up back pressure on the heart. Heart tries to pump faster and faster, and patients die from cardiac failure. So one way of thinking about this is one is able to recreate the vasculature in the lungs. You may be able to impact progression of disease. Endothelial progenitor cells, by the name themselves, are stem cells that give rise to new blood vessels. But initial studies using endothelial progenitor cells alone were found to be insufficient from a biological function perspective to drive to clinically meaningful observable benefit. And so there was a screening study conducted to evaluate what functionality within these endothelial progenitor cells would lead to improved regenerative capacity of these cells. And what was found as a part of that study 
is specifically increasing expression of endothelial nitric oxide synthetase by these cells led to improved biological activity and function. So essentially, the product concept emerged, whereas you could take the stem cells, give a drug to animals to induce disease. The stem cells alone do nothing. Their systolic pressure continues to rise. But in the treated group, which are given the stem cells, which have been engineered to enhance nitric oxide synthetase, there is a transient drop in this systolic pressure. And two weeks later, half the animals are still surviving. If you visualize blood flow in the surviving animals, it's somewhere in between normal animals and disease animals. So there's a biochemical indicator in terms of measurement of systolic pressure showing that engineering ENOS secretion by these endothelial stem cells leads to better regeneration that's accompanied by histopathological observation. But the proof really lies in terms of what is the impact on overall survival, which is the clinical gold standard. And again, in a randomized animal study, there was a significant benefit demonstrated on overall survival comparing stem cells alone versus stem cells which had been non-virally engineered to overexpress nitric oxide synthetase. Now, this program has been partnered with United Therapeutics. They're driving this in, into the clinic. Clinical trials are ongoing, led by Duncan Stewart at the Ottawa Heart Research Institute in Canada. And essentially, what they have seen up until now is all product preparations were successful. They were able to make dose and meet the requirements in terms of characterization of the cell product. There was no toxicity or product-associated AEs reported in the patient. And there is transient uh, uh, indications of biological activity, biochemical activity, and some clinical surrogate markers that the investigators are very excited about in terms of moving this forward. A second example I want to share with you is there's a lot of talk nowadays about making iPS cells and driving iPS cells to various different types for both drug screening purposes as well as therapeutic purposes. So we have a couple of relationships and partnerships where we're actually making iPS cells by loading proteins or messenger RNA into fibroblasts or T cells or other types of cells in a DNA fingerprint-free manner. So essentially, we can make iPS cells that are pharmaceutical grade without any exogenous DNA fingerprint involved in it. Not only can we make iPS cells, but if you think about stem cells in general, the ability of the cells to go down certain pathways is really a gating event. And if you can create those gate, recreate those gates and make a stem cell go through those processes, you can actually drive differentiation fate commitment of the cells very effectively. What you see in here in this slide is a photomicrograph of mesenchymal cells that are downstream from muscle-specific differentiation pathway. They spontaneously will give rise to bone cartilage of fat, never to muscle. We can go in these mesenchymal cells and tickle an early muscle-specific transcription factor in a transient manner, and lo and behold, we get 100% conversion to fused myotubes beating muscle cells in a petri dish that all stain positively for myosin heavy chain, which is a terminally differentiated marker of muscle cells. So again, shows the power of the technology in terms of just getting to iPS cells, driving the iPS cells to a desired fate commitment thereof. Uh, two years ago, in, in a collaborative relationship with investigators at Hopkins, so Maryland has a very, very small stem cell fund, much smaller compared to California, but we were recipients uh, in this collaboration on a program of actually uh, generating iPS cells and converting them into uh, red blood cells for, for treating uh, transfusion-related injuries. Now, in all of these examples, I've talked to you only about transient modulation. We're not just restricted to transient. We can actually do genome engineering as well. And we have multiple publications and presentations working with different technologies that, uh, such as Sleeping Beauty, uh, zinc finger nucleases, omega nucleases, where we can efficiently convert gene-engineered cells for therapeutic purposes. At the recent ASGT meeting, Sangamo presented data using, again, the MaxSite GT system. They were able to get 30 to 50 percent functional gene correction in hematopoietic stem cells by loading messenger RNA encoding zinc finger nucleases. And not only that, they showed that in in vitro and in vivo studies, these stem cells were able to engraft and subsequently differentiate to reconstitute the entire hematop hematopoietic lineage system. So essentially going back to the first tenet, do no harm. Don't impact the function or the activity of the cells. And the second tenet, to get to high levels of functional correction that may be desired that is of therapeutic benefit. So essentially in all of these applications, 
what we're trying to do is solve two of the biggest risks, right? We're trying to make cell therapy more effective by driving very early on in the developmental process specific attributes that enhance the potency. And the second aspect is we have a scalable system for cost-effective manufacture and delivery at clinical and commercial scale. I'm going to now segue and talk about the two partnered product opportunities that we have clinical data on that we are interested in identifying potential opportunities. So the first one, as I mentioned, is a dendritic cell vaccine. This takes the patient's own tumors, generates a lysate from those tumors, uses the maxite platform to cytosolically load the lysate into the patient's dendritic cell. Immunology 101, by cytosolic loading, we skew the processing and presentation to get about a tenfold improvement in elicitation of tumor antigens restricted CD8 satellitic T cells compared to the cells taking up the antigen in a culture method. And that's the basis for enhancing the potency of that particular vaccine product. This has been commercially, it's commercially marketed as an autologous immunotherapy service in Japan by Medinet. They have subsequently licensed beyond Japan to other Asia-Pacific territories. We're actively looking for potential relationships to partner this product in other geographies. The second product I'm going to talk to you about is something we're very excited about. This is a product that we've been working on for over half a dozen years in collaboration with academic investigators, both uh, at the University of Pennsylvania as well as uh, previously at uh, St. Jude Children's Hospital. It's in the area of what is called chimeric antigen receptor engineered T-cell immunotherapies. For those of you who don't know, a chimeric antigen receptor is an artificial molecule which doesn't exist in nature. What it consists of over here is an antigen binding domain from an antibody, which is on the extracellular side. On the intracellular side, you have potent T-cell signaling mechanisms, which are the signaling mechanisms used to drive activation of immune cells in natural course of infection and immunity. So what you've taken is the knowledge from antibodies, coupled it to immunology, brought them together. So when you make this as an artificial molecule, express it in a T cell, you can redirect the specificity of the T cell to essentially that particular tumor antigen. Okay? What really was exciting is a couple of groups in early proof of concept studies have just shown phenomenal clinical benefit in terms of using this chimeric antigen receptor technology to lead to meaningful, observable responses in end-stage cancer patients. And that's really got this whole field excited. All of this has happened in the context of B-cell leukemia lymphomas. So it's all, again, liquid tumors. Uh, it's a little bit lacking up in terms of catching up on solid tumors from that perspective. But the data was so compelling, even with these few handful of patients treated, that companies such as Novartis and Celgene have taken a deep dive into this particular area, licensing technology from the academic universities, as well as some other companies have been able to attract pretty significant amount of venture financing to help build programs in this particular area. Now, what we're doing in this area is actually all of these previous efforts utilize either retroviruses or lentiviruses to engineer the T cells. So we're working on a non-viral approach to engineer T cells with the CAR molecule using messenger RNA. And really the rationale as to why we're doing this is A, it is not gene therapy. We're not introducing a viral vector. B, it is not permanently integrated. mRNA is expressed only transiently. That allows us to control the systemic toxicity to normal tissue. So in this field, the concept of on-target, off-tumor toxicity, when you use constitutive expression by retro or lentiviruses, has led to patient deaths in very early clinical trials, especially going after solid tumors. So to a large extent, use of viral vectors may be enabling for liquid tumors, but has significant challenges in applicability for solid tumors. And essentially, we believe using our platform, we have the ability to change the paradigm of how cell therapy is practiced, moving it away from a two-week manufacturing process in a centralized location to a patient bedside distributed model of manufacturing and delivery where product manufacturing happens in a matter of hours for being delivered into that patient. So essentially, that's the advantages of mRNA CAR. I was one slide ahead of myself. Where we are right now is uh, our collaborators from Pennsylvania have submitted, a pre uh, have submitted a manuscript for publication in science translational medicine. 
describing the first four patients treated with mRNA car-loaded uh, uh, immunotherapy uh, using the Maxite process. What they have reported in this paper, which is going to come out, is they're able to effectively make a dose. There is no AEs associated with the product, and they're very excited about some of the clinical responses that they're seeing in terms of measurable objective evidence in some of these just four patients treated to date. Uh, additionally, what they also saw was what the concept of what is called epitope spreading, where although you are targeting a particular antigen, if you measure pre- and post-vaccination, you're generating an immune response against entirely novel set of epitopes to which there was no existing pre-immunity. Okay? The concept that we have that we want to take forward and what we are looking to partner is essentially a patient would come in, would be phoresed, you would collect a therapeutic apheresis, messenger RNA encoding karmatic antigen receptors would be available as a bottle on a shelf. You would take that and the therapeutic product, use the Maxite platform to load it, wash, formulate, and infuse in the patient. And if you can make multiple doses, you can cryopreserve those doses for subsequent administration. So that's the product concept in terms of taking it away from a two-week-long gene therapy centralized manufacturing to a point-of-care few-hour process to manufacture and deliver the product. So in summary, specific to this product, what we have shown is in vitro and in vivo data. This is all published, showing mRNA CAR gives you the same safety and efficacy as lentivirus or retrovirus. We have multiple four clinical trials ongoing using mRNA CAR loaded into expanded T cells. We recently got compositional matter and methods of manufacturing patent cleared on this concept of point of care manufacturing using freshly isolated therapeutic apheresis product that addresses the logistics of the cell therapy product leverages existing global infrastructure in terms of therapeutic apheresis and transfusion medicine and allows us to essentially go in into, uh, uh, into uh, human clinical trials, and that's really the context we're looking to partner on. Okay. So to come back and summarize, if you're a company in the audience developing stem cell-based therapies, come talk to me. My colleague, Doug Darfler, who was supposed to give the talk and ask me to give it instead is also in the audience, so we'd be delighted to explore how we can help you and if you are interested in any of the two products I talked about, uh, we're delighted to engage in discussions. Thank you very much.